everybody this is Michelle with creative operation and I'm here today to do a tutorial for my design team package that I got from country craft creations and um, the paper that I got is absolutely beautiful um, you need to get over there and get it it's uh, graphic 45's ocean blue and it is absolutely stunning so I mean honestly this paper is is absolutely gorgeous um, I created an album that we're going to do today with a pop-up feature and it's going to really, I think, feature the papers really nicely. So um, I just wanted to show you really quick before we get started um, these papers. Um, I received in my design team package uh, 16 of the papers and they're all 12 by 12 and they're just so pretty. So super pretty. Um, I used, in this first project, I used um, how many of them? Eight. We'll go over that in a minute, but I just love the colors, and I love, because, like, the ocean is my favorite place in the whole wide world, so, you know, um, this really was <laughs> an amazing package to get. So, um, we'll go through this real quick. Got these wonderful cut-aparts. I mean, aren't they beautiful? Um, yeah, so these papers are stunning. So anyway, in this paper, or in this uh, design team package, I got 16 of these papers. So I basically used half of this already. And then um, they also gave me these die cut assortments. So I don't know if you can see that really well, but all kinds of uh, fun things that I'm gonna use in decorating this album. And then I also got the stickers. So I'm really excited to, to use those. Also in the package, and what I'm going to be using in the album, I've got the binding, seam binding, which I've already pre-crinkled. So I got the three colors of that, and then I got this wonderful ribbon with the seashells on it. So I'm going to be using um, a little bit of all of this in this album. And I'm calling this my pop-up album because we're going to have a really cute, fun pop-up element in it. So I think we should just go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with a couple of things before we get to actually going. So for this, I was trying really hard to keep track of everything that I used. And I'm usually pretty good about the cardstock, but um, not so good about the pattern paper. So I tried to be um, mindful of that and just let you know this is what basically you're going to need. So we're going to need a couple pieces of chipboard, which I also got in my design team package, 12 by 12, and we'll need that to make the um, cover for the book because um, this is a, a chipboard album. You're going to need um, two different colors of cardstock if you want. I did it, and um, in the cutting guide that I'll put on my blog, and I'll have a link down below, um, I show which pages to cut out of which color. So I used two. I used the navy and I used the brown of the um, artisan cardstock from Country Craft Creations. So um, anyways, the main color is the navy and you'll need eight of those. And then the accent color is brown and you'll need four of those. And then for the pattern paper, you need eight um, sheets, which included the cut aparts and the embellishment sheet with all the other little strips and things that you can cut out. So um, it doesn't take that much paper and you'll see why once we get going because some of the pages actually don't use a whole lot because I wanted to feature those three by four cut aparts. So anyway, so this is what you're gonna need. And then the other thing too, before we get, well actually I'll, I'll go over this, but um, to do the pop-ups, I tried to make it as easy as possible, so we're going to create some guides so you only have to really measure and, and stuff once, and then you can use it for the rest of the book. Um, so we'll get going with that. So let's get started um, again with the chipboard and making the cover. So um, on the chipboard, you're going to need two pieces that are six and a half by ten and a half. That's the size of the album with a two inch spine. So you'll need one piece that's two by ten and a half. And then the card stock to cover, you'll need one at 12 by 12, one at 12 by six, and those two will cover the card stock. And then you have one at 10 and 3 eighths by six, and that's gonna cover the inside spine. So basically you only need two pieces of card stock to do the, the, the cover. So let's go ahead and I've already pre, um, taped my chipboard so we can just go ahead and lay it down um these are the two pieces that you'll need to actually make the cover and 
we're going to use our scoreboard. We need to attach these together. I'm doing the, um, I guess the old um, original way of doing the album. Um, now Tamara does have the way of doing that um, flat fold album that a lot of people have um, liked. And I keep like forgetting to do it and then I kind of get carried away because this is kind of my go-to. So um, you can use either way. You will need different cuts of cardstock to do that um, because it's wrapped differently. But, um, you know, it can be done either way. It doesn't really matter which um, you choose to do. So uh, you're going to take these two pieces and you're going to stick them together with a quarter inch uh, score tape. And then, oh, I needed that back. Ooh, excuse me, that was really loud. Um, and then what you're going to do is grab your scoreboard and um, I use these cheater sticks that Tamara um, showed. Now, the only problem with this is that um, you can only use one of them. You'll need an inch on the side, but the, um, the chipboard here is ten and a half, so it won't quite give you um, an inch on the top and the bottom, so you can't really use it. It's about three quarters of an inch. So you can use one for the side to make sure that everything's all lined up really nice. So I have it lined up down here, and I have it lined up here, and I have my my little one inch chipboard cheater stick so that I can make sure I get it lined up really nice. And then I'm gonna take the strips off here, and knowing that I need about three quarters of an inch up and down, I'm just gonna kinda eyeball this, but that's about three quarters of an inch. And I'm looking right here to kind of eyeball that. And I'm gonna stick that down. And then we'll put the quarter inch score tape that's gonna go between that and the spine. So now what you can do is you can move that up just a wee bit. And you can put your cheater stick down because then you can match it to the bottom of the chipboard piece that you just had so that you can make sure that this bottom edge matches up real nice and even. Because we've already measured, we already know where it's gonna go. So we don't need to worry about that anymore. So then take your spine piece and we're gonna lay that down nice and straight. All right, and then one more with the quarter inch score tape and then we'll get that other piece of chipboard and put that down and then if you want you can move since we don't really we don't really need this anymore because we can use that at the bottom and just hold it nice and straight And then lay that down, if I can get it unstuck from my fingers. Okay. There we go. So we can get rid of these now. And so now we have our chipboard covered. Now, obviously, this um, album is going to be 10 and a half tall by uh, 6 and a half wide. The pages will be 10 tall by 6 inches wide. So then how I like to do this is make sure we stick it down really well. Um, how I like to do this is I turn it over and using, I've got a really dull kind of bone folder here. I'm just gonna feel the edge of the chipboard and go around the edges and just kind of start training the paper. I know a lot of you have seen me do this before. So if you've seen it before, feel free to fast forward. For those of you who haven't seen this before, this is how I kind of train the paper. So I just feel the edge of the chipboard and just run this down and that'll help kind of train the paper to go the way we're wanting it to go for wrapping the album. Okay, so all four sides. And then after I get done with that, I usually like to take it and kind of bend it a little bit and then just kind of, just help it. Help it know where its home is. 
Now you'll notice that the seam is gonna be on the back of the album. The other thing too is make sure if you're going to um, do albums like this, make sure that seam is not where your um, gussets are here between the spine and the covers. So either make sure it's somewhere in the back of the album or somewhere in the middle of the spine. Um, good safety tip there. So once you get that trained, then grab your score tape again and we're going to go around the edges. Like so. And then this is where I like to take these off because I'm going to be needing that space. So when I go down with the score tape, I like to use my fingernail and kind of tease that into the spot so you don't have that score tape bridge. And that'll help the cardstock stick down better. Alright, again I'm going to stick that down using my finger. I'm just going to push that, push that in there. And then, there we go. We're going to do this all the way around. Ooh, and I'm going to run out of score tape. So let me, excuse my reach here. All right, I get some more. My score tape. I knew that was going to happen. I don't know why I didn't get another roll ready because I knew it was going to happen. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do these sides. And I hope y'all are doing okay. So far, we're doing okay. Hanging in there. Um, staying safe, staying home. Um, I did have to run out to Joann's the other day because I've been making masks and I ran out of thread, um, black thread, and I ran out of um, sewing machine needles and I was breaking them like crazy. I don't know why. But anyway, so I went. That was a, that was an interesting proposition. It was crazy. The superstore we have in our town is huge and... They would only let 15 people in at a time. So, it took a while to go in there and get what I needed. And I wanted to check on elastic and bias tape, but they were totally out, so that wasn't fun. Anyway, um, so here we go. So then I'm going to cut the corners. I probably could have done that before I took the tape off, but, you know, I didn't because I was talking. So... Just cut the corners. Now remember when you cut the corners, you wanna make sure you have at least an eighth of an inch between the corner of your chipboard and the um, cardstock because that's gonna wrap around the corners and that's gonna hide the corners for you. All right, so we'll do that. And then, then my little mantra, for those of you who haven't heard it, top, bottom, side to side. So that's how I do the wrapping. And then I'm just gonna lay it over and stick it to itself like that and then grab my bone folder and just stick it down we'll worry about in there in just a second so then I'm going to just take my fingernail you can use a bone folder too and I'm just going to push that corner in my thumbs usually work much better for me and then fold that over and you will have a nice, you can see that you'll have a really nice um, covered corner. So that's how I like to do my albums. Um, again, you can use the other method of doing this too, um, which is the lay flat method that Tamara has. So um, either way you prefer to do it, it's fine. Um, it'll give you the same result. You just need a cover for the album. 
Okay, so then I'm gonna take the bone folder and I'm gonna just kind of go in the edges here and just make sure that's stuck down. Kind of real gentle, you don't wanna rip the paper or anything. Just tease it down. Okay. All right, like that. And then we're gonna grab that piece um, that we needed. So this is uh, 10, the album height is 10 and a half, so I cut it an eighth inch shorter, so it's 10 and 3 eighths by six, and that's gonna cover the spine piece. So I've already pre-taped um, that. And I found that the score tape, um, you know, adhesive tape works really, really well on the sides, uh, or on the albums, I should say. This works really, really nice, um, and it stays really well. And then I'm just gonna turn it sideways because I can kind of see it a little bit better because I want a little bit of room, you know, top and bottom, I'm trying to get it even. And I'm eyeballing it, right, roughly. Stick it down so it covers the spine. Get a good stick and then I'm going to just kind of gently bend that so I can see where it is. And then I'm gonna just run my bone folder down those nice and gentle to start and just get that nice and stuck. Okay, same with here. There we go. Nice and gentle. Okay. All right. Now this album is um, really kind of fun. It's three pages or three page assemblies, I should say but it will create six pages for you with large pockets. And we're gonna add some pockets and do some stuff. So um, this album will hold quite a bit and then it'll have that fun pop-up feature too. Okay, so cover is done. So then you can just kind of gently work it. Okay, so there's our cover done. And then um, real quick, what all I did was I kind of pre-made some stuff to make it kind of go quick. I usually don't do a lot of decoration during my tutorials, but today I'm gonna to do a little bit more. So, um, first of all, let's put these to the sides for now. Um, one, one of the things that I did, let's go to the outer cover. So one of the things I was trying to do was save, conserve my pattern paper. Um, this is the front cover is six and a half wide. And if I cut this more than six inches, then I'm gonna end up having to use two different pieces of paper, which I didn't wanna do. So what I did was I cut it um, six inches wide for the front cover and the back cover. And then we're going to add, I took some strips of um, cardstock and stuff that I had, um, to fill in the gap. And so that'll create a nice border edge on it so that you could only use one piece of paper to cover this, even though these are six and a half inches wide. So you will need for the outer and the inner cover, just two pieces of pa uh, pattern paper, which is PP, if you see my, in, in my notes, PP means pattern paper to me. Um, you'll only need two to cover this album. Um, and then um, you're gonna cut them at two, uh, 10 and 3 eighths by six. Okay, so once we do that, let's see, put that note there. I'm gonna put this off to the side. So then we're just gonna simply glue it down. Um, I chose not to do um, a closure on this album. You can if you want, and if you're going to do that, now is the time, if you're gonna do like a ribbon closure, now is the time to add that on there um, before you put the pattern paper on. But on this one, I chose not to do that. So, there you go. Um, I'm using art glitter glue that I got from Country Craft Creations. So, I'm going to just, let's see, do I have this backwards? I think that looks better, yep. I'm going to just lay that down and it's gonna give you just a wee bit of room, you know, around, border around, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lay that down. So you'll see that there's a little gap here where the pattern paper didn't cover it because I didn't cut it wide enough and I did that on purpose. 
So then what I did was I took these pieces of um, strips of uh, artisan cardstock that I had left over and I went in my stash and I had this punch that I've had in my stash forever and ever and ever. And it was perfect for this. It has a little sand dollars and the starfish and stuff and seashells and things. So I border punched the strip. And before I punched it, I put a line of half inch score tape down. So then that way um, it would be easier to stick down for me. So I'm going to use glue on this and I'm going to um, take that part off. And it'll just peel right off. So then you don't have to worry about trying to do glue in all of the little spaces. So I'm going to do that. Put my glue down. And then carefully flip this over and... I'm going to turn it sideways so I can see it a little bit better. And then I'm just going to lay it down like that. Well, or not. How about I do it like that? <laughs> there we go. Matching those up. There. Okay. And now we have the border piece for the front cover done. Okay, see how nice that looks? So that's a nice way to, um, if you have an album that you want to um, try and conserve your paper, you can use some scraps and you can kind of fill in the gaps. So then um, on the cut apart that came with the paper, I cut out that strip, you and me in the C, so we're just gonna glue that down. Get that turned over like that. Okay, that looks good. Be careful when you're doing this. Don't mess up your little border punch. And you can use any border punch you want. I just was like, seriously, how perfect is that border punch for this paper, right? So then we have the back page. And I think that probably looks okay. I did pre-ink all of my um, pattern papers on this one because it's so dark um, the you know because the colors are so dark and everything um, so I did use that I used um, Tim Holtz distress ink and just did the edges so I've already pre-done everything all right so just do this again lay that down There's that. Okay, then my other border strip, so that's just gonna go down there. Now for the back of the album, I did not um, put the strip down there, but you totally could. But I just thought, well, since it's the back of the album, I'll just leave it, but I will use you know, the, the border strip, so. Okay, so glue here. I just love the colors of this album. I love it. All right. Match that up. There. Okay. All right, so front cover is done. Just kind of pressing that down just to make sure that I get my score tape stuck on my little pieces. And then, then, what did I do with my stuff? So then on the outside, so I'm, I'm not gonna decorate the front cover yet, quite yet, but I'm going to use this um, for that. Um, this was one of the cut-aparts in the collection, so I just kind of trimmed it down to make sure that it fit the cover nicely. 
and it says seize the day. So that's going to be a cover element, um, but we're going to decorate that later, or I'm going to decorate that later, and I'll show you that. Um, I also did make a spine piece. So what I did was I just took a strip of the cardstock. I put some pattern paper on here, and then um, the ribbon that came in the collection, I just wrapped it around the pattern paper to tuck it underneath, and then I set one of these um, fasteners on here, on the back. So that's gonna lay down here. And then I made a dangle that's going to attach to that when we get done. Let me show you this. It turned out really super cute. Where is the top of it? <laughs> right here. I think right here? No, wait. Wait for it. It's coming. Hold on. There it is. Okay. So I made this really pretty dangle. Let me get this out of the way so you can see it. So I had these shells, these metal shells in my collection, in my stash. And I had these little baubles in my stash and everything. So this is one of those um, Tim Holtz facets that were the clear acrylic pieces. And I just took some of my scraps and used some glossy accents to adhere them to the pattern paper. And then I cut them out, inked the edges so they're nice and sharp. And so I did three little pieces like that. So I got the little shell, the little seahorse, and then the words that says life is better on the beach. And then um, I went ahead and added the, um, the little pearls because I thought that was really cute. So that is going to end up attaching to here and be the dangle for my album. So that'll be the decoration. So let's go ahead and lay this down. And then this piece will be, you know, the outside cover will actually be done except for the final decoration. And I did, I don't know why I did this because I'm trying to use, um, you know, contrasting colors for some reason. I use the blue on here and <laughs> we're just going to go with it. So it's just going to be blue on blue here, but that's okay. That's okay. I could have used brown. I didn't. I don't know why. I think I was thinking when I did this that I had brown here and I didn't want to use brown next to it, but that's okay. And this was um, the little, the blue paste here that I used was part of the leftovers from cutting stuff out. So, all right. So now I have my spine. So there's going to be, that's the front, the spine and then the back cover, done. So now we're gonna do the inside cover. So I decided to use these two pieces. And these pieces, again, are, that's one piece of paper that I cut at 10 and 3 eighths by six. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a pocket on each side so it will cover up that re the rest of the space. So this particular part, we're going to adhere close to the spine, and then we're gonna put a pocket here. So front cover, back cover, make sure your orientation's right. So you're gonna grab a piece of paper that is going to be, you need two of these, and I used accent colors. They're gonna be two of them at three by 11 and a half. And on the 11 and a half inch side, you're going to score at half and at 11, and then you're going to turn it on the three inch side and you're gonna score it at two and a half, okay? Then what you're going to do is you're going to miter your corners like we always do and then I had a piece of pattern paper that I added we're going to add this first to here all right so we're going to put that down first this is going to match the edges of our album so it's going to go totally the wing the lit blah the <laughs> the height of your album, okay? And then we're just gonna simply just glue that down like we always do. I'm gonna put a little dot of glue there to help that stick or not. It doesn't wanna stick. I gotta hold it down a little longer. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. And I'm just going to put some glue on here and we're going to glue it down. I'm going to turn it sideways so I can see it a little bit better. And it's just going to match top and bottom right to the edge of your album cover. I'm going to put that down. Now you don't have to put the pattern paper on first. I just did so that you could see. Um, trying to be a little better about showing the decorating. Now here's where this is probably the easiest way to do it. So you don't need to put the glue down first. You stick your paper down in there. Okay. And get it lined up where you need it. Okay. And then where you want to place it. Just like that. So it'll slide right into your pocket. Then you can lift it up. Then you can put your glue down. The bottom of the pocket, you know, will hold the other end in. So you don't need the glue down there all the way down and then just put that down and boom you have your pocket you have your cover covered and everything is beautiful okay so let's do that again with this pocket we'll go through the steps here so we're going to miter our corners like that and then we're going to I'm going to move this out of the way we're going to fold in our tabs okay and then again this time I'm going to just put the little glue, dot of glue down. I'm going to hold it down just for a second. And again, these are the cover pockets. I did them in the accent color. You don't necessarily need to. Okay. And then what we're going to do, I'll move this over the way, or out of the way. Turn this around because that's how I'm going to do it. And then um, put your glue on, your tabs. And then again, just right to the edge. Just like that. Okay. All right. So then we'll stick our paper in there. And our paper is cut so it's a little bit shorter, an eighth of an inch shorter than the um, cover itself, all the way around. Stick it down. And get it in there. Oh, come on. Okay. I'm going to gently pull it out. Put it where I want it. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to hold it down with my hand as I lift it up so it doesn't slip. And lay that down. Okay. All right. The last thing to do is to put down our pattern paper on our pocket, and then our cover is pretty much created. Okay. 
and we'll work on the pages. The pages are going to be fun, I think. Okay. All right. Lay that down. Boom. All right. Okay. Nice little corner. Okay. All right. So, cover's done. All right. So, there we go. So, let's set that aside for just a little bit. And then um, we're going to work on our pages. Um, our pages are fun. I think they're going to be fun. I think you're going to like them. So let me show you what they're going to look like. So I've already completed two of them. We're going to do this one, the first page that's going to go on our book. We're going to do this one together. But I've already completed the other two. So each page assembly, there's going to be three of them total. But what they're going to give you when you open them up is you're going to get a page that looks like this with the pop-up. So we'll have the two pop-ups and then you're going to have two photo mats for pictures and um, I intentionally left all of this blank and used just the solid cardstock because I you know the mechanism is going to show I didn't want the little tab showing on the pattern paper and all that I didn't like that look but it gives you um, it, the focus on your pictures and on the cut aparts and so that's why I left all this blank so this will fit a four by six picture. You could put a little picture here. We could decorate it with some of the embellishments. You can do all kinds of other stuff. If you want to put pattern paper down, you absolutely can do that. I just chose not to. So the page assembly, again, so you'll have the front page of it, then you'll have the pop-up page, and then you're going to have a pocket, and then your back page. So you basically end up with this nice big assembly for each of the, the pages themselves. So out of the three that we're gonna make, you actually get six plus a giant pocket, okay? So I've already got two of them done, and let's go ahead and do how we or, uh, get them ready to go. So let me get the pattern paper out of the way. So for these, you're going to need three at 12 by 10, and you're gonna score on the 12 at the six inch mark. So that's what I've already done. So it's 12 by 10, score it at six, and then fold it in half. That's the very first piece, super easy. The second piece here is the large pocket slash attachment, and you need three of these, and they are six and a half by 11. So you're going to take your scoreboard and, okay, so you're gonna put it in your scoreboard um, on the 11 inch side up at the top and you're going to score at half and you're going to score at 10 and then what you're going to do is you're going to turn it and then flip it over and then score at six and the reason why is because we're going to want the tabs th this long tab here is what's going to adhere it to your page so we're going to flip it the opposite direction from the tabs that are going to fold in and make the pocket it's going to make sense here in just a second so we're going to do this for all three pages. They are all going to be identical. So we're going to miter the top and the bottom tabs, but you are not going to miter this long side tab because that's going to be the attachment to the spine of the book that's going to attach this page to your book. So you don't want to miter those tabs. You just want to miter the top and the bottom. Okay, so when you get done with that, you should have a piece that looks like this. Okay. So, get these little chunks off. So then, we're going to fold the top two tabs, or the top and the bottom tab, I should say, in. And then this long one is going to fold the opposite direction. Okay. Okay. All right, so then we're gonna take our page. Now, make sure what I did was, I'm gonna, this is gonna be the front of the page, okay? So this will be the back of the page. This is where the pocket is going to attach. So it's going to attach, the side pocket will be here, and then the tab will be in the back, okay? So you'll have your page with the pop-up elements in here. This will be the pocket, this will create the pocket with the tabs and then this will be the tab to attach it. So it was easier for me if I just turned it sideways because it is so big. 
Um, and then I added the glue to the tab here. And then I glued that down to the edge. Making sure I get it all nice and straight. And just glue that one down like so. Okay. And then I opened it up and made sure I got a good stick and wiped up the extra glue. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and put glue on this tab. And then you're going to glue just the edge just above the score line for the tab. And then we're just going to fold it over and complete the pocket. Okay. And then I used my bone folder and just made sure that I got a nice good stick. Like so. Okay. So now what we've got is our assembly. So we have our tab that's going to attach to the spine. We have the first page. When we open it up, this is where we're going to put the pop-up. Then you have a pocket, and then you have the back of it. All right? So now that that part is done, um, let's look at... So I cut pattern paper. So the way that I did the pattern paper for this album was I used three sheets of... Get this out of the way. I used three sheets of um, pattern paper for the entire assembly. So sheet number one was the front and the back, and I just cut them at nine and seven eighths by five and seven eighths to cover. And then as we open the book, it's going to be identical. So again, nine and seven eighths for the pattern paper, five and seven eighths wide. And then, so when you open the, to the next page, they mirror image each other. So that's what I did. You don't have to do that. You can mix and match if you want, but that's how I planned to do this album. Now we can go ahead and cover the front and the back now, which is absolutely fine. So let's do that. And then the, we'll do the pop-ups. We'll go through that. All right. Okay. So there's the front of our assembly. So that's going to be the front page. When you open up the cover, that's going to be the first thing you see. And then the back of the pocket will go there. And again, I pre-inked everything, so. And these pockets are really nice and big, too, so you could put all kinds of stuff. If you went on a beach adventure, you know, and you had, like, pamphlets um, from places that you visit, when we finally all get out of quarantine and get to go out, um, you could put those in there. You can tell I had a lot of caffeine today, too, can't you? <laughs> okay. Hands are shaking. All right. Okay, so front and back are covered. So now let's work on this. Okay, so let's start by, let me get what we need here. Let me see if I can explain this and then we're gonna go through and we're gonna make them all exactly the same. So you're gonna need some clips of some sort, whether it be paper clips or clothespins or clamps or whatever. And we're gonna make a couple things. So um, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to make some guides that are going to help us make the pages. So you only have to basically measure this part once and then you're done, okay? Um, for putting the mechanisms on. I was trying to see how simple I could do it. Um, I made a book using this and it worked perfect. I made the other two pages um, using these guides and it made it so super simple it wasn't even funny so um, 
we're going to make these guides. I'll show you how to do that, and then I'll show you how to use them. So the first guide you're going to want to make is um, cut a piece of scrap cardstock. Um, make sure it's kind of on the sturdier side. You know, don't use um, typing paper or something like that because you need something a little bit sturdy just so it can, you know, stand up to what we're going to be doing. And so the ten by three. So then what I did was I put it in my scoreboard, and I scored in at one and three quarters, three and one quarter, six and three quarter, and eight and a quarter. And what that did was gave us the placement guides. The mechanism is gonna be placed in this area here. So what I, I scored again, I put it on the 10 inch side, scored it at one and three quarters, three and a quarter, six and three quarters, and eight and a quarter. And so this is just kind of a visual. So I scored all that. And then what I did was I turned it over. I drew some lines to make it kind of simple. So this half inch area right here and here is where the mechanism is going to be placed on the page. And I'll show you how to use this in a second. You're going to line these up. Um, I even wrote down. So the first placement of these pieces so that you put the mechanisms on is going to be the upper left page second placement will be the lower right page it's going to make sense to you in just a second and you're going to line up the shorter piece of the mechanism with this particular piece okay so that's the first piece second piece is a piece that you're going to have it's going to be five and a quarter by five and you're going to put it in your scoreboard on the five inch side and you're going to score, because that just gives you the lines so you can draw the lines. That's the only reason we're scoring it. So you're going to score at one and three quarters and three and one quarter. Okay, so that's again going to give you the measurements. So this one and three quarters is from the top or the bottom of the page. And this one and one half here is where the mechanism is going to sit. So I turned it over and then here's the kind of the directions for it. So you're going to line, when we do this, you're lining up the page edge in these corners. The mechanism will line up here. The first placement will be the upper right page and the second placement will be the lower left page. Now, um, and also the longer piece of the mechanism will line up to this area. So it's gonna make sense in just a second. But um, again, if you wanna pause the video and write all this down, I'll kind of leave that there for a second so you can do that. And then if you want to pause and do that on the other side, it'll just give you some direction and it'll show you how to do it. So let's do it. Let's grab our mechanisms. Okay, so we're going to need a couple things here. Let's see. Let me get all of my pieces in order here. Okay. So the mechanisms that you're going to need are going to be, let me put this aside for a second. You're going to need six of them, and they're going to be uh, one and a half by six and three quarters. All right. You're going to put them all in your scoreboard, all six of them. I'll do this this way because this is how I have it written in my directions and just so I don't confuse anybody. Okay, so we're going to score it half, four and a half, and six and a quarter. Okay, so these half tabs are going to be the ones that adhere to the page. And then you're going to have a piece that's four inches wide. That's the longer piece of the mechanism. And then you're going to have a piece that's one and th uh, three quarters inches wide. Yeah, one and three quarters inches wide. Yep. And that is the shorter piece of the mechanism. Okay. So when I refer to the longer piece of the mechanism, I'm referring to the four inch piece. When I'm referring to the short inch or short um, piece of the mechanism, I'm referring to that piece right there. Okay. And then the two half tabs again attach to the page. Okay. You'll need six of these. And then what I found that was easiest to do was to, I have um, in the cutting guide mats to cut out um, that go on these um, mechanisms. It's easier to mat them now than it is to do them when they're in the book. The only thing 
that I want to caution you on is that when you do this, so I have it so that one goes one way, one goes the other way. So that's how we're going to put them in our books. Don't put your journaling cards or your cut aparts on until after you get this down and on. Um, the reason why we want to put the mats on first is because you need to make sure you measure them at a half inch from the, the fold here. Um, and it's easier to do it when it's laying flat. But then the journaling cards you can put on after the fact. It's not a, it's not that hard. Um, but if you want them in specific areas or whatever, it, it just makes it easier if you just wait for the journaling card part or the cut apart part until after the page is made. Okay, but we'll put the mats on because that's not going to make a difference. So in the in the cutting guide. You're gonna need these. They're uh, four and a quarter by three and a quarter. And then I went ahead and used some brown as accent, and I cut four and an eighth by three and an eighth. The brown ones are not in the cutting guide, so if you want those, that's extra. And then um, I picked out the cut aparts that I want to add to that after they're in the book. Okay. So and then um, the other thing is for the pattern paper piece. Um, for these, you're going to need two little pieces that are one and three eighths by one and three eighths. And I just use scraps. And this one happened to be a strip that was left over and it was perfect size. And so you'll see when that goes on there, it's going to be kind of cute um, with a little seahorse. Okay. So then um, the next thing I wanted, I want to do is I want to go ahead and grab my centering ruler because this made it a whole lot easier. Okay. So you're going to want to, let me see if I can explain this. So if you see, if you can see that, so the shorter end of the mechanism goes on the one side and then the longer one goes here. You're going to, you're going to adhere your journaling card part, your mats to the longer section. And you're going to want to do it a half inch from that half inch tab on the longer section. So, on the longer section, I have it right here. I'm gonna just put that down there. Now my, um, this centering ruler is a half, one and a half inch, inches wide, so it works perfect and it has the centering thing. So if you have that, this is the perfect thing to do, but I just lined it up with a score and I lined it up so that the zero was in the center. And then you're going to put glue in this, the rest of this long section. Okay, just like this just in the long section. You don't want it in the short section. And then take your mat. Okay, so if you double mat it again, um, I did not put the brown in the cutting guide. That's four and an eighth by three and an eighth. But in the cutting guide, the, the mat for the, the main color is um, four and a quarter by three and a quarter. So however you want to do it. And I'm just going to line this up. And with my centering ruler, it goes to about two and an eighth. And then just stick it down and then turn it over. You will have overlap and that's what you want. And I just took my bone folder and made sure that was all stuck down, made sure there was no glue sticking out. Okay. And then you've got that done. So we're going to do this with both of them. Um, and then this way, one will go on one side, one will go on the other, okay? This little part right here, um, this is where these little squares are going to go, okay? Hope that makes sense. So let's get the other one done. We'll go through this again. So I'm going to lay this down so that the long side, the long piece of the mechanism is right here. I'm going to use my centering ruler, line it up to that half-inch score because that's going to fold back, okay? Um, make sure that's nice and centered. I'm going to put the glue on the rest of that long mechanism. Grab my mat, line it up about two and an eighth on each side of that center. Stick that down. Turn it over. Make sure it's nice and adhered. Make sure there's no glue, and we're done. 
okay so now we have our two mechanisms and they can they can set either way so you can see why if you put the journaling cards on now if you get them backwards that might be a problem so we're gonna wait to do that okay so we have our two mechanisms done and then we're going to grab our page where did I put it where did I put it here it is all right, so making sure that we've got it oriented the way we want. So we're going to open up our book, and then we're going to grab our cheater sticks, okay? I don't even know what to call them. Cheater rulers? Um, anyway, um, <laughs> so um, the first placement, upper left page. Okay, so the first placement is going to be the mechanism that's going to be on the upper side that's more towards the left, Okay. So in the one we've already done, upper side more towards the left, first placement. So that's what I have written down on here. And this is where your clamps come in because I'm just going to line them up to the edge of the page. And I'm going to clamp them down so they don't scooch around. Okay. And then I'm going to take this guy, first placement, upper right page. And then I'm going to put that guy right here. Okay. Line that up just to the corner like it says and the other thing too is I will take pictures of this and I will put them on my blog along with the cutting guides so that you can see that and you can even print them out um, if you want to okay so this is where our first placement is going to be our first um, deal is going to be here and note the shorter piece of the mechanism okay so if you turn it over a shorter piece of the mechanism this is going to adhere to this edge right there so I'm just going to fold that over and I'm going to put glue to that half tab, okay? And for me, it was easier to turn it sideways. And then I am just going to line it up just right to the edge in that one and a half inch spot. And I'm going to stick it down. And then I'm going to make sure that I get the glue off. And then I'm going to take the next piece and I'm going to, I flipped it sideways so I can see it better. Put glue on the tab and stick it down. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all you need to do. So then, once I did that, then you take the clamps off, take your guides out, and then I closed my page just to make sure that it lays nice and flat. And boom, you have your pop-up. That's it. So then for the second pop-up, second placement, lower right page, second placement, lower left page, we're going to do the same thing down here. We're going to line that up, clamp it so it doesn't move around. So I did this, I used this guide in my practice model in my prototype model that I did in the pages you already saw and it worked perfect every single time. Okay, so let's see here. So if we're gonna do this side first, this is the longer piece of the mechanism. So again, the longer piece right here. And this just ensures that they go the opposite direction. If you want them to go to the same direction, you can totally do that too. It's all up to you what you want. I just thought it would be fun to have them go the opposite direction. So I'm lining that up. And you can see the tab, I fold it under and I put it in between the one and a half inch area. I'm gonna turn it. And this shorter piece of the mechanism goes with the shorter piece of the mechanism right there. Put glue on my tab. Stick that down. And it doesn't really matter if you do the short one first or the long one first. It's totally up to you what you want to do. So once you get it stuck down, I'm going to take my clamps off. Take these out and then close my book. Make sure it lays nice and flat, which it does. And then we're done. There you go. So then the next thing to do is I want to decorate just a wee bit. 
And again, um, it's a lot easier to put these on, I think, after you get the things in there to make sure that the orientation of your pictures is proper. Okay. And then I like the fact that this strip of paper that I got, this is a seahorse, so you can see kind of the top of the seahorse and the bottom of the seahorse, so it kind of matched a little bit. <laughs> Symmetrical. I like things symmetrical. Okay. Okay. Put that on there. Okay. And then I'm going to grab this and I want the wording at the top of this one. So I'm going to put glue on my cut apart here. Center that bad boy. Okay, like that. And I'm getting my little Mr. Crab here. I am so sad. There's a crab fest every year here at the coast, and this year I was actually going to go, and it's canceled. I'm so upset. Everything, everything's canceled. My husband's gigs are canceled. Everything's canceled. Of course, you guys all know that. But, oh my gosh. It was like 2020 was supposed to be a good year. And um, I'm really apologizing to 2019 for giving it such a bad time. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. And then you got your two big mats. And so I'm just going to go ahead and glue those down. And these um, are going to be for pictures. And I, whoops, I just thought that the contrasting colors was nice. You could, if you wanted to use pattern paper, you could do that. Um, again, you could cover this whole page with pattern paper before you stuck down the mechanism. It's totally up to you. I just wanted to um, leave it open and kind of really focus on the cut aparts. And then it also gives you lots of blank space to, to decorate, um, do whatever you want. Um, you could even, you know, do journaling there if you wanted to. Um, totally up to you. I thought this was super pretty. And I just love the blue-brown combination. I just love it. So. Okay. So then that page is done. Boom. There you go. All right. So now we have our three pages done. And... It's time to stick them in the book. So, let's grab our book. These all have a half inch gusset. We're gonna start at a half inch in, and then we're going to just lay them down, um, waterfall style. Excuse me, make it a mess, can't find my pencil. Okay, so I'm just gonna mark in just really lightly, half an inch in, and draw a line, because that'll just give me a little placement here. Try to make sure it's as straight as I can get it. Let me try that. Just a light little pencil line. All right, and then making sure that your pages are in order. So they are. All right, so I'm gonna turn it sideways because it's easier for me to see. And then I'm just going to um, go ahead and put glue on there and then just lay them down. They are 10 inches, so there's about a quarter of an inch from the top and the bottom. Okay. So, excuse the gray hair if you see it. Let's move that down just a hair. See, did I do it? Looks like I did it. Okay. Let me turn my page. Make sure that's nice and stuck down. Okay. Alright. Then... Next page, same thing. Let 
and I'm just going to line this up to the edge of the other tab that's holding this in. Lay that down. Whoop. Make sure it stays stuck. That's always a good thing. There we go. Okay. See how pretty this is? Oh my gosh, I just love this. I just love this. Okay. Then the last page that I'm going to put in, I'm going to do my patented turn it over trick so that the tab doesn't stick out on the binding. So I'm going to make sure and I'm just going to adhere it down backwards, okay? So you will have, if you don't do that, you'll have a tab sticking out towards the spine, which is fine. If you don't want that, then I like to stick mine over top of the previous tab. So I'm going to do that. Gives a nice finished edge on that side. So I'm just gonna line that up over the tab of the previous page. And stick that down. Just like that. Okay. So, we have our book. All right. Um, so then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add pockets to the left page here. So super simp simple and quick to do. Um, do those before or after, excuse me, after you, um, after you go ahead and put the um, pattern paper down because these pockets are not as wide as the page. So I will show you. So I've already made a couple. So page um, three will go here. Well, if I can get it in camera, I'll get it in camera. How about that? Then you can see it. So we'll do that. And then, let's see. And this will just be a nice little pocket for, um, let me go wraps up here. That way I don't have to hold it. <laughs> I tried close pins like Tamara does, but I like flip them all over the room. So I gave up on those. This one's going to be on page two. I already kind of pre-ordained where these guys were going to be. So now on these, whoops. Wrong way. Oh, wait. I guess it doesn't matter. Never mind. All right. Okay. I'll show you how to make these pockets in just a second. So let's let those sit and dry for just a sec. So we're going to put the first pocket. It's going to go right here. So let's get our pieces out. So you will need a piece. You'll need three pieces all together that are three and a half by six. These are the small pocket and you're going to put them in your scoreboard and you're going to score at half and at five and a half. And then you're going to put it on the three and a half inch side and score it at three. Or if you have it the other direction, it'll be half. So anyways, half inch on three sides. And then we're going to do our usual miter the corners. Um, to create the pocket and again, I use the um, Accent color I'm calling it which is the brown um, You don't have to if you don't want to you can use the main color. You can use all the same cardstock throughout this I just thought the brown was super pretty and Then we're gonna fold those score lines and then of course that's what's going to give us the pocket space for this corner it's not okay so then what I did was I like needed to cover this with pattern paper and I was trying to conserve my paper so I ended up I had strips left over from the pattern paper that I used so what I ended up doing this pocket is three inches and so I figured out the measurements and I cut two strips 
And then this little word piece that says, smell the sea, feel the breeze, hear the ocean, be at ease. Um, that's off one of the cut apart um, sheets from the pattern collection. So I just cut that strip out. That strip's gonna go right over the top. And so I did that for all my pockets. So then that way I was able to use um, the leftover strips that I had to cover the pocket so I didn't have to cut a whole nother piece of paper. So um, these ended up measuring. Let me measure them for you really quick. Um, so like one and seven sixteenths, so one line below a half. Um, and then the strips were four and seven eighths inch wide. Okay. So then, you know, just however, you know, you feel like putting them on. But this was a this was a kind of a clever way of um, just using the leftover pieces and not having to cut open you know or cut into a whole another um, piece of paper because I wanted to save it. I still have two other projects I'm supposed to make, so <laughs> I wanted to try and conserve my paper as much as I can too. That was the other thing. So just lay that down. Okay. And then I'm just going to lay this down. And it may not go quite all the way, you know, touching each other. That's okay, because we're going to cover that up with that little strip. So that's not a big deal. Okay. And then I just put a line of glue right on where it touches right there. And then I just laid this strip on here. Right over that. Boom. Done. Whoop. Or not. Okay. It's a little bit long. I'm going to cut a little bit off. And grab my sponge. And then I'm going to do little bit of glue. Lay that back down. Okay. All right. So now our pockets are done. Okay. So this one will be pocket for the first page. And the other two have been drying. So... We can glue them down. Okay. So we'll start at the back of the book. And I'm just going to grab the one that says page three. And I'm going to put the glue on the tabs and stick it down on the book. And then we're done with that. And then all that's left is the tabs for the big pockets. So I'm just eyeballing this. It's roughly half an inch all the way around. Okay. All right, done. Now you have your pocket on this page. Okay, so then we'll turn to this page. This is page two and same thing. So I'm going to get everything done except for the decorating on camera. You'll get to see everything that I've done for the decoration um, when I do the like the walkthrough um, video. But we got most of the pattern paper on, which is kind of cool because I don't do that very often. <laughs> I usually, um, you know, just show you how to make the bones of the book and, and the simple, you know, stuff but I got most of it papered today so that's kind of cool all right and then page one which is the one we just made and get the glue in here and I hope all of that made sense with the mechanisms but it's like super super easy 
Good thing, um, you know, with video, you can go back and you can watch it again and again and again. If you have questions, please let me know. But that was like the simplest way, once I figured it out, um, so that you only, you didn't really have to measure anything and like draw lines down the page and stuff, which is what I did the first time. And it was like, oh my goodness, how am I gonna, how am I gonna do this? But, all right, so there is our book. So we've got our cover done. Got our spine, back cover. Oh my God, this is turning out beautiful. We got a pocket here. So a long pocket, nice big tags, pamphlets, all that stuff for when we get to be let loose. Um, pages that have the pop-ups, focus on the cut-aparts and your pictures. You can decorate those. So you've got the inside, so you got a nice pocket page here and a nice place to put lots and lots of pictures. Another pop-up. You know, oh, you got your big pockets in here. Each page has that. So there's that. Okay, so now the last part, tags for the big pockets. So the large pocket tags, I just simply cut three pieces at five and a half by eight and a half. So super simple. And then I took the stamp cut apart that was on the sheet um, that came with the collection. <laughs> excuse me and I just made tabs so I just cut out two of the stamp shapes and then I put I just glued it on there so that it made um, tabs okay so I just did three like that and then I'll, I you know I might decorate and I might put some stuff on here but for now they're just all blank and they go into the big pocket pages so one for each page and they'll stick out just a wee bit and look really cute. Just like that. And you can stick all kinds of stuff in those pockets, but isn't that cute? I mean, seriously, I love this paper. This paper is just adorable. So you, now you have your nice, you know, pocket pages, and there you go. So uh, that is the end of the tutorial for today. I'm going to decorate it and get it all finished up, but that's how I made my ocean blue pop-up album. And I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope all this made sense. Go back and um, rewatch it. But honestly, this was the easiest, I mean, slickest way I've ever seen or come up with, I should say, to go ahead and figure out how to place, you know, your, um, your mechanisms. I mean, this just worked out really good to make a cheat, kind of a cheat sheet kind of thing. And it worked for every single page. Um, and then you can keep this. And if you ever desire to, you know, make this again, then you already have that made, but, um, turned out really, really super cute and it worked great. So, um, anyway, uh, I will have pictures of that on my blog along with the cutting guide so you can make your own. And, um, again, thank you for watching. I'm going to get this decorated and I'll get everything uploaded as soon as I can. So thank you. Go to Country Craft Creations, get Graphic 45's Ocean Blue um, paper line. You will not be disappointed. This is an amazing, amazing paper line and you're going to love it. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.